if you're watching this, I'm assuming you know. But if you don't know, the Celtics sent two second round picks along Lamar, along with Lamar Stevens, the Memphis Grizzlies, in exchange for Xavier Tillman. Now, guys, Tillman's an interesting guy because he kind of kind of flashes shades of Grant Williams to me, uh, a more athletic Grant. And this is gonna I, I don't want for this to take up too much time, but I definitely want to talk about Xavier Tillman. I want to hear what everyone has to say. Personally speaking, I love the move. Um, I think, again, you added without subtracting. Lamar, I'm sorry, you just weren't getting minutes. I think this is the third string big man that the Celtics were looking for. 6'7", 250, who can move in transition in the which the way he can, guys. In his 13 starts, I want to stress this. Eight points, seven rebounds, two and a half assists, 1.6 steals, and 0.8 blocks. The guy, when he starts, is almost averaging three steals a game. And mind you, there were two two games when he uh, started and only played ten minutes. He got hurt. Mm. I mean, it's like Franco. I'm sorry, Justin. You go. You go. No, I was gonna say it's like okay, Celtics have their offense with Chris Josh Porzingis and Al Horford, and then you get your defense with Xavier Tillman. You don't right. really get that with Luke Cornett. Sorry, Seamus, but you know, <laughs> right? So it's like. <laughs> you don't you don't get that it's like this is like a uh not to compare him like player to player but similar body type like it's like a big bigger boned robert williams where robert williams was an undersized center he was not he was not the the the, the tallest guy uh but xavier tillman is a little bit bigger bone and he's uh also you know six seven six eight you know so why are you guys all laughing I'm well, not. All right. Well, I, well, that this is something I want to, is that a jack? No, 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 no. <laughs> this is something that I want to talk to Seamus about because now I think we can be agree uh, being agreement. Gosh, we can agree on something. There we go. Get it out. Luke Cornett now fits into a role in which I love. I'm happy. I love. The the, uh, and again, <laughs> these, <laughs> well, no, because I don't think we're done seeing Luke Cornett. Don't get it twisted. No. Uh, <laughs> if you think we're done seeing Luke Cornett, I think you're completely wrong. Um, because again, there are going to be oh, games where Al Horford has to rest. And when Al Horford has to rest, you're going to slot Cornett back. Right. And then when Kristaps, like there's going to be, you're going to see more Luke Cornett this year. Don't, don't think he's just gone. Don't worry. But <laughs> you're going to see Luke Cornett, Seamus in times in which it's going to work because he, is in a position now to succeed. Garbage. I don't. I'm not so certain we're going to see Luke Cornett anymore. Honestly, really? <laughs> I'm. I'm not so certain. Are we? So we're right in a now, disagreement again now. It's flipped. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just thinking about this because I'm thinking five bigs makes no sense because Kada is a big man who should be on the roster. I think. I don't know. I, I want to say that's an agreeable point. Maybe it's not. If one believes Cornette should be still on the roster and Kata should be still a two-way player. But what we've Whoa. seen out of Kata in his minutes, I believe he deserves a standard spot. And under that scenario, he's the fourth big. And it's like, who's squeezed out? Ooh, it's Luke Cornette. And I do see another team somewhere around the league. He's under a favorable salary. It's a very easy salary to move. He's under, what, $2 million salary right now. And mm. I could see another team going, yeah, we could add to our Big man core a little bit here. He's not the most versatile of bigs, but he knows the fundamentals of the game and will make right. the right decisions on both ends of the floor. And I could see him being a trade piece tomorrow for the Celtics, just a little bit. Not one of tremendous value, but one maybe potentially that could get a deal done and send some salary over in a potential trade. So Luke Cornett, I am a Luke Cornett fan. Don't get me wrong, but I'm also a fan of efficiency. And if the Celtics... If they plan on signing Kata to a standard spot and having Tillman on the roster, which is, of course, going yes. to happen, Tillman is a tremendous add, I, I want to add as well. That, I believe, will squeeze out Luke Cornett. So, well, Franco, or... Frank, I have a question for you real quick, because the Celtics now are reported to not be done. Uh, they are still in the market, which you love to hear. But you figure big man moves already happened, so it's going to be a guard. So two things. One, how do you like Tillman? Two. I want to hear a name, a guard name in which someone you like on the market. Well, Tillman Yard Dog. That that's what my old basketball coach used to call him. It's a center that is undersized, going up against people four or five inches taller than them and bodying them around the paint. 
the, it's a necessary add to this team. He's got grit to him. He's want to know who he's reminding me of. But all all three came to mind when I was watching the highlight film Jared Sullen today. Um, crazy. <laughs> um, Marcus Morris, Grant Ooh, Williams. I actually like that. And Robert Williams. I can see a hybrid mix of both of those in him, and that's going to be a huge add. And it's going to kind of be interesting because it's going to be an either or situation. They can put Kata back down to the G League and keep Cornette around. So, which that I think is going to happen. Would, my pick. Yeah. Would, I mean, I don't think they could get rid of Cornette without tears being shed during that practice tomorrow. <laughs> Like, I mean, come on. If Brad walked in there during practice tomorrow and is like, hey, Luke, pack your bags. Your head Brad would to... be the one crying. He's the biggest Luke. <laughs> yeah. Ever, dude. Are you kidding me? Well, this, is, um... this is harder for him to trade Luke Cornett than it was to trade Smart, Robert Williams, and Malcolm Brogdon. <laughs> I think um, I think a knock on the Celtics this year has been their intensity. I think Tillman is not afraid to get up in your face and let you know how he's feeling. I mean, there's a clip and a Seamus. You posted, I loved it. I and absolutely loved it. He was, he, him and Kyrie going at it. first of all fits right into Boston, right? You, I'm buying his jersey. I'm buying uh, his jersey. But second of all, um, you will. I think that intensity is something that Boston was lacking. Was a guy that you know is not afraid to just kind of play with some uh, physicality and in in the Garden crowd. I mean, Tatum says it. The Garden crowd absolutely eats that up. You get physical. You get personal. You you know you give it a little. You know, the KG used to pound his chest and bang his head on the back. Like you do stuff like that. The the knuckle push ups. That's what gets this the Boston crowd going. So I really think Tillman, not just from a basketball standpoint, right? I think it was a great addition. But I also think from a, like a, the the you know little things from an intensity and, and a physicality standpoint, they nailed it. And I, I really think that you know again, does it move the needle from the Celtics not winning the championship to winning the championship? No. But what it does is one, it adds depth because I, I feel I think right now he's probably the seventh best player. He's probably better than Hauser um, as an, a, a, an all around player, and it also. Right, it gives you a lot of flexibility now. It does. You can run out if you want to run some small ball. You can run small ball and defensively be. Oh my god! I mean, the the white brown Tatum, uh, Tillman lineup with, with Holiday out there, that could be that could cause some that could cause some defensive I mean, problems, man. With, the switch with ability, too. right? And, and you can and you can now run that. And I, I'm praying, I'm praying this happens. Run switch coverage. Which is something that is much better, and quite frankly, that's what made the Celtics def defensively so great in that 2020 year. Do you guys? It would be switch everything. It would be screen switch, screen uh, off ball screen. You're switching it on ball screen. You're switching it right. And I think Tillman brings that defensive versatility. I I, I believe he does as well, and I think off the bench, it's a huge difference when you put it in the light of imagine going up against the Philadelphia 76ers in the playoffs and Joel Embiid. Imagine right. bringing Cornette off the bench as your third big versus now Tillman. And then potentially, if we do keep Cornette, still having Cornette right behind him, that's definitely a more versatile option to have off the bench and more ways you can play than what we originally had before today. And we talk about it all season long. This Celtics team, their ability to play multiple ways is what makes them elite at times. Because in that Indiana game we saw last week or two weeks ago, or whenever it was, right? That game, the Indiana Pacers were running up and down the floor. But once the Celtics could go and play their way in the fourth quarter, in which I thought they did in moments tonight, not necessarily quite in the fourth quarter, but at different stages of the game, rather, the Celtics were able to win those moments. And in the playoffs, with Tillman now on the roster, they're only going to have more ability to do that against more elite opponents going forward. So this Tillman ad for Lamar Stevens, Franco, I know you love Lamar Stevens, but let's face it, this guy was getting zero minutes. He's a Ford. He's slotted behind two all-star elite Fords, another Ford off the bench and O'Shea Brissett and Sam Hauser, two Fords off the bench and Sam Hauser and O'Shea Brissett. Wasn't getting any minutes whatsoever. That was an easy salary swap made our roster better and 
gave the Celtics the ability to go out and make other deals as well, right. while also adding at a position we thought was going to be the priority coming into the deadline. Now, the Celtics, I don't want to say they have an embarrassment of riches now to go out and do anything because there are still limitations and they're going to have to move some pieces. But the fact they were able to land Tillman today at such a cheap cost and still have some of the resources available. We think about the grant TPE. We think about some of the other salaries at the back end. I know I talked about Cornette earlier. All of those resources are still around for the Celtics to go out and make another move. Six and under those circumstances, the Celtics are going to grow into quite a good team potentially after this deadline if there's another move made. Right, Not six second round picks to move as well. Not that this matters, but does anybody feel like like Fima Kai Luke is just for sure gone? Like how is you don't I, I don't like call me I just, crazy. But Spie, and again well, why I, are you picking on Spee? What no, about listen, O'Shea? only because uh, he's, he's too Whoa, dude. Locker room. Whoa, locker room, don't go there. I'll, I'll square up with me right know, now. I'll go with I'll fight for O'Shea right now. Hey. On the pod. Dude, um, we would you know how much content we would lose with O'Shea traded? I I, I mean well, I, religi- like I religiously I religiously Yeah, I I religiously watch his YouTube videos off of yeah. sides. But hold on, guys, because I don't think right that Boston need they have an open roster spot first of all they and they have the Grant Williams tree, uh, TPE and again I do this is stuff I want to talk about tomorrow but I, we're gonna braze over and then Seamus I want you to you know get those glasses prepared but Fine. two names right you got six million dollars six point seven million dollars to play with that TPE you got six second round picks you got a couple first round picks a couple names Lonnie Walker City right the Sadiq Bay there's guys out there who teams it's gonna be I think this deadline is gonna be a fire sale of just random players, I think you're just going to see is fire sale, fire sale, fire sale, second round picks, oh, second round Detroit, picks. Uh, the whole Detroit Pistons roster is gone. Right. Like, like, like you're just going to see players just getting sold and sold. Atlanta's probably going to be one of them. Chicago might be one of them, right? You might, Indiana's looking to add, LA's looking to add. I mean, you got San Antonio's kind of in this weird spot. You got Washington that probably is going to give up Tyus Jones. You have San all these Francisco. players on the mood, right? I mean, you go, the Warriors are looking to get, I mean, Philly is looking to do something now with Embiid and uncertainty. They got this big, uh, this big, excuse my language, this big uh, contract with Tobias Harris sitting on their, uh, uh, right on, on their books with a really easy move, an expiring deal with forty million dollars, you can swap swap that easily. So there's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. That is why you have to tune in to the live the um, trade trade deadline special right back here. What's up, guys? If you like that clip, you can watch more of us right here, or you can join us live right after every single Celtics game on the Celtics Talk Weekly post game show.